Thank you for joining us today for talk and discussions. In this part of the project, Sleeping for Tomorrow, we'll meet different people around the world, sharing with us their opinion, ideas, and thoughts about the changing of our time and their hope for the future. What is a storytelling? How can we use storytelling in today's world? In today's conversation, we will have a small glimpse with the Irish artist Colin Corti, talking with him about his approach about art, the idea of storytelling. He will share with us how his work evolved through time, what happened in Ireland during the corona, and his experience as an artist and a teacher, and what evolved from this. I would like to share with you that today's conversation is recorded in our new expanded studio space, a space that I can share with you my experimental work concerning communication and connection. So I would like to say thank you for calling, for joining us for this conversation today. Hi, Amis. Thank you for inviting me. Colin, can you tell us what is your approach to the idea of storytelling and share some examples from your influences? I work primarily in painting and I have done for some years work uh, in the medium of oil paint and work with a uh, subject matter that mainly involves um, figurative compositions and uh, figurative narrative. I've always been interested in um, ideas around community and uh, I guess so subjects that are have been very kind of important through history, uh, subjects of social gathering. Um, so art, art historical influences are, are always present really in my work. Um, subject of the figure um, from I think early childhood, you know, here growing up in Ireland and the awareness of um, boundaries between people. Um, from a broader context, I'm interested in looking at paintings, looking at historical paintings always kind of struck by figurative composition and particularly group formations and uh, images of kind of social gathering or even even being isolated apart, apart from a group. I'll give you so, a few examples. I mean, even thinking about like early Renaissance, particularly fresco painting and these uh, images that tell stories, mainly kind of religious stories and the kind of symbolic gesture between the characters, two-dimensional space in the material of the wall. You know, I'm really kind of influenced by that idea of like images on a wall or, or subjects being painted on a backdrop behind something that maybe appears more like a figure that maybe appears more three-dimensional. And that shift between um, the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional kind of playing with this artifice of trying to create this sense of three-dimensional. I was really interested in the, the theatrical, you know, kind of simplicity and gesture between bodies and how that could kind of tell kind of a story, albeit more theatrical than what we assume real life to be. Also really interested in 17th century uh, French painting, um, particularly artists like uh, Antoine Marteau and uh, images of social gathering within parkland. Um, the French term Fete Galante describes these, these kind of scenes of people together and interacting socially within kind of this bucolic nature. So, you know, in terms of storytelling, that really kind of struck me and how like, these kind of construct, constructions or constructed scenes, albeit kind of theatrical, kind of told the story. Um, and I, I think, you know, even in in the work of Watteau, I think the space of the theatre um, and acting, you know, became a kind of a, a tool within composing these kind of figurative arrangements. So uh, really kind of inspired by those kind of periods in art history. Um, so in my own work, really, I suppose, looking at the world around me today and very much kind of engaged with the present and moved by situations, community formation, you know, uh, what it means to be part of a group and society within today's world. I mean, when I talk about kind of um, togetherness and this idea of situations of isolation, I'm talking about cultural kind of divisions, social and economical divisions between groups. 
I'm talking about situations of migration and uh, integration and how difficult, you know, the challenges facing people that are fleeing conflict from par other parts of the world and, and, and seeking kind of integration within a new society, within a new place. And uh, I find that kind of you know, challenging and um, kind of disturbing that there is these kind of rules and uh, policies around terms of acceptance of, uh, of people that are seeking refuge and seeking asylum um, become kind of uh, displaced from their own communities. You're working with collage. Can you tell us what is the process of collage for you and how it's being seen in your works? The process of collage has become more important over the last couple of years as a painter. You know, seeking forms of information, photography has always played a part. And this process of um, you know, drawing and filtering information from images, found images and, ta and personally taken images. So it feels kind of natural that the process is moving away from a direct source of information like photography and more of a construction of a situation. So um, I really, really liked how collage disrupted pre-existing imagery or the notion of pre-existing imagery as a source of information to work from. So oh, collage in, in, in multiple ways, really, it's in the studio, like a cutting, cutting and splicing magazines with colored paper, with existing um, photographs that have been printed out, but also um, Photoshop has played a, a role in the past of kind of um, fragmenting compositions, but you know ultimately collage meaning kind of taking a process through multiple stages of editing, and then as well in the process of process of painting, actually making decisions that have been influenced by these kind of sketches these studies is collage studies. So, you know, that collage process still continues within the, the, the painting process itself. You know, the feeling of collage comes down to the process of painting and how I'm conscious that to represent space, I'm dealing with shapes, I'm dealing with, uh, I suppose, how light is affected or fragmented or disrupted by, by shapes. So it's all the time kind of disrupting this kind of, uh, traditional notion of perspective and uh, space. I also like that kind of feeling, that, uh, that sense of composition, fragmented, slightly chaotic composition of collage has a feeling of something being constructed within the painting or collapsing. So, I mean, feeling has become a much more important uh, over literal kind of imagery and storytelling of something being built or coming apart. Colin, I would like to ask you if you can tell us what was the changing that happened in your work through the years? My pain has been evolving, I guess, for over 20 years and uh, it's gone through numerous kind of stylistic changes, but also um, modes of depiction and representation and being influenced by different kind of periods of painting in the past up until about 2017, I was really kind of looking for a feeling of, of a real, a sense of a real place. Um, and at the same time, exploring different atmospheres um, and questions around belief, whether this place existed. And that very much has come from kind of historical influences of, of representational painting. At the same time, these were complete, like, constructions and um, they were almost entirely imagined. And I suppose that was kind of the, the inspiration behind making previous work is that is to imagine something and to, to make it look real. Um, and it has certainly a kind of a, a dreamlike effect in that sense, um, because we question um, what is the situation who are these people? Colors has changed a lot in, um, in my practice over these number of years. Um, color previously, very much it was coming from a, a 
a palette that was toned and that kind of dealt with light, light and shadow um, in, in a kind of a, I suppose, in a desire to kind of make something look physically three-dimensional. Um, the shift into using more saturated colors, um, it, it started to kind of change from about 2017, 2018 onwards, where I was starting to um, really kind of question uh, more critically uh, painting and what painting tries to do in terms of uh, de depiction, in terms of telling a story, in terms of it as a medium. So I kind of deliberately kind of shifting that sense of, of a real space um, into a situation that feels more constructed. And that itself is has a theatrical feeling at the same time it's just kind of highlighting that paint is is a, is a medium that um, constructs a sense of reality or constructs a sense of of, of feeling in my work a feeling of, of place and space so um, the shift between previously always trying to make something look three-dimensional and a feeling of like real space into a situation where we question if this is a real space or not. We question um, the relationship between feeling of the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional. During this uh, period, um, you know, maybe about a year or two prior to 2020, um, the, the size of the work and the, the format and the, the scale of the work has, has changed. I generally worked in quite a small intimate scale, you know, where the work was something that you'd have to approach and uh, became almost like a, a port or a window, uh, a more like a compressed space of, for the imagination. And because of the shift in composition and color and the move away from feeling of uh, intimacy of scale, the work became you know, larger and something uh, more immersive and something that where color the use of bright color kind of had more of kind of a physical impact, you know, when, when approaching the work. Colin, can you share with us what was the feeling in Ireland in the Corona time and how did it affect you? The initial lockdown I found very strange. It lasted for about, I think, two to three months. And there was a distance, uh, a restriction on the, on the distance that people could travel. I think in Ireland it was two, um, two kilometers from your home. Um, so it was, it was really quite strict and I think everybody was just bewildered and just found the whole situation really surreal. So a bit of a shock. It was also, because it was so different, um, there was some little bit of a, kind of a novelty of it at the very beginning. But I think that wore very thin, you know, after a couple of weeks. Um, everyone's circumstances are, are different. I, I found it okay. You know, fortu I was fortunate to have something to do, have something, you know, to appreciate a bit of space that was kind of created from this. Except of being an artist, you're a lecturer in an art college too. Uh, can you tell us, please, what was the experience or what was the feeling at the time of this with the students? I lecture in fine art in a, an art college, so I was able to work remotely. But, I mean, it was, I just saw how challenging it was for the students. Certainly, there is a feeling of, a more familiar feeling of normality. By and large, people have kind of got back to living normal lives. But I've no, I have noticed with, you know, with students that I work with that it's been very challenging to kind of find their place again, you know, to feel kind of comfortable, comfortable around people. Some, some find it harder than others. I think these kind of long periods of lockdown and really important years of self-development that students have missed out on not being together within the college environment and getting to know each other it certainly made an impact. I think, I mean, what I would like to really help kind of establish in my teaching role is to support students to, uh, 
to really reconnect with each other and with their practice and with the broader art environment of making connections with each other and with professionals outside of after leaving art college really just to be supportive and just to be encouraging and to try and help students to kind of rebuild an understanding of how important it is to have real connections to uh, their peers in particular because um, the relationship with their peers probably going to be the most important uh, friendships and uh, maybe professional relationships in the future you know? so hopefully kind of helping students to uh, develop that connection I think there was um, such a kind of a, <clears throat> a dependence on digital media and a kind of a, an exponential growth in the use of media to communicate um, in the workplace, but also, also socially. Um, I imagine that social, social networking kind of had a huge kind of growth spurt during that time as well. So I think it's, it's created kind of opportunities for us to connect in a meaningful way, the online place. Um, that's kind of, I think, established now. That wasn't so established uh, before 2020. But I would kind of like to, like to kind of think and we will kind of prioritize, you know, meeting face to face and, um, and having that kind of real connection with people again. And I, you know, I, I think it was such a kind of a saturation of the use of media over the last couple of years that there's probably an exhaustion around it. And um, I would kind of like to think that we would kind of use it for its benefits, but at the same time, kind of you know, not rely on it as much as, as we have. You know, I, th I think particularly around um, uh, social network sites, the virtual space is kind of really preoccupied and how information is is shared and how um, news is delivered um, has become kind of exhausting, particularly around kind of wanting updates on uh, the, the situation that we were all living through together. Um, certainly there's like fatigue set in, but I would like to think that there would be kind of more of a, a detachment from, from media, certainly around kind of you know, communicating with people, um, and less of a kind of a, a reliance or a kind of need for constant flow of information. Colin, can you share with us a moment from this time of the corona? In the initial um, lockdown in uh, 2020, I moved uh, to the countryside from the city and spent a number of months, found it difficult like everyone, but at the same time, found it kind of fortunate to be able to kind of have that space to uh, be in nature and have that space to think. I found it. I found it very challenging to make work. I felt that the kind of the routines and the pressures of everyday life seemed to have shifted, and uh, I found it a very difficult time to concentrate on making work. But what I noticed happening um, was thinking about more of the relationship between the subjects, uh, the, the the characters in my work, and the, certainly a more um, with with the natural distancing from people. You know, I was really thinking about this kind of uh, feeling of connection and intimacy between people and feeling, um, which I think is certainly generally more kind of positive within my work, kind of starting to kind of emerge um, and evolve. And it continues to be a kind of a reaction to the world as it is, kind of stories and uh, challenging changes that have, that have happened over the last couple of years it, it seems to be kind of a more of um, a space of intimacy a space kind of removed from that um, environment after the initial kind of difficulty of um, dealing with concentration and the difficulties around making work I think probably the most positive thing that happened really during that time was to have a, kind of a, a deadline for an exhibition to work for work towards and uh, that's when I really started to kind of connect with my work again and started to kind of process, I suppose, the kind of the experiences that I, I kind of lived through. And I, I kind of found that the most kind of um, positive and kind of uplifting. In the time of the corona, there was changing in your work and something you developed from this. Can you share with us what happened? In 2020, I was um, contacted by uh, Miranda, Miranda Driscoll, who's an Irish curator based 
in Washington, DC. Um, she's a visual arts director at the Solus Nguyen Art, Art Center. And this idea for an five Irish artists. There's quite a variety of work in this exhibition. There's a uh, installation work, uh, photography, sculptural work. There's uh, wall drawings, print media, and also painting. And the exhibition was going to be uh, shown, first of all, in the Irish Art Centre in New York. It was from December 21 to, to May 22. And uh, particularly to do with the opening of this new building, to be a showcase of, of, of Irish visual art to celebrate the opening of this new um, Irish Art Centre. That actually has been established in, in in a health kitchen in New York for some years, it's just a development of a new, of a new extension, a substantial new space. Um, the title of the show, "The Space We Occupy," Curia's idea was to was for that to kind of think about um, our relationship, uh, place in the world, and think about the kind of micro and macro kind of relationship to to themes um, around uh, our place within society, our place. In relationship to the environment and the changing environment. The exhibition has, has moved to Washington, D.C., um, to Solis Nua um, Art Center on to the end of July. The idea behind the exhibition is that it kind of gives a, a, some sense of an overview of the type of work currently coming out of Ireland, um, a, a range of that work, but also a range of themes, um, work that deals with um, concerns around the, the environment, um, our relationship to uh, place in terms of history, um, uh, colonial history, presented six works uh, in this exhibition, um, five, five of which are, were new works made specifically for the show. The exhibition in its current uh, context um, in Washington DC um, is hosted by the Southern Newark Gallery, but it's also, it's shown in an alternative offsite space um, called uh, the Whittle Building, and it's a, a particular architectural design that's quite unique. Um, the curator designed a particular strategy for presenting the work. Because the, the, the building had more of a floor space than a wall space, I come up with this kind of strategy for hanging the work, two-dimensional work, on these kind of large frames. So I think it's a very kind of unique context for the work to be seen within but also the nature of my paintings and, and this kind of constructed environments i felt worked really well with this you could see you could see the view the whole environment through the walls and I, I felt that this kind of notion of kind of construction fragmentation within my own work worked well so i would like to say thank you again for calling for joining us for this conversation today Thank you, Ahmed, for inviting me. I really enjoyed, really enjoyed our chat. And thank you all for joining us for this conversation today with Colin. To hear and see more recording from past talks and discussion, and to know more about this project, you can go down below or in the website www.sleepingfortomorrow.com.